Today on Visual Studio Toolbox, we're going to continue our look at the future of Visual Studio, and this time we're going to look at team productivity. Go, Go team! team! <laughs> Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and joining me are Amanda Silver. Hi. Anthony Cangelosi. Hello. And Kendra Havens. Hi. And we are back for part two of our two, possibly more, yeah. uh, episode <laughs> series on the future of Visual Studio. So previously on Visual Studio Toolbox, we covered personal productivity and cloud productivity. Yep. And today we're going to do team productivity. That's right, yeah. Excellent. So team Go productivity team. is... <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> So team. Um, team top productivity is super important. I mean, everything that a developer does is generally working with somebody else in right. that same project. So I think what we've really been focusing on is how can we make uh, collaboration when you're debugging something or when you want to get a code review really, really, really as focused as it can mm -hmm. be so that your team is, is much faster in terms of the time to market that they're trying to achieve. Cool. So we have a couple of different demos that we wanted to show you guys. Uh, but I think what we wanted to start with is just like a reorientation back to what we talked about last time. So, yeah. Anthony, take it away. So, I think last time we were talking about how annoying it is when you have a bug that uh, you can't reproduce locally, but right. of course our customers are finding it in production. And we were just showing a demo of time travel debugging, and because it's so cool, I kind of want to show it again. Should Absolutely. We jump yeah. into the demo? Okay, right. cool. So, um, so this. And then uh, just to remind everybody, uh, we are using previews of upcoming versions. Right. Okay. That's right. Yeah, so, um, you know, there's no smoke and mirrors. This is, uh, we'll see what we get and we'll see which demos Excellent. work and which ones don't. <laughs> uh, but uh, so this is the Smart Hotels app that we've been using for uh, the last couple of months. It, uh, we've got this feature that is the best rooms and it's trying to find the best rooms in the hotel so that you can kind of sort which rooms uh, you might want to book in. And obviously here I'm seeing a list of rooms, but our customers weren't seeing it in production. So what we were able to do is actually get a trace of the production environment at the time that the customer is reporting the issues. So we actually have all the execution and memory at that snippet of time. So I can mm -hmm. actually go back and debug that and see what was happening for that customer. So let's, let's go ahead and load that trace uh, into Visual Studio. And I'm going to drop a little breakpoint right where the page loads uh, for that. And then let's kick off uh, debugging a, record, a previously recorded process. So here's the trace that was recorded of the production environment, but I'm loading it into my uh, local dev environment here in VS. So I can, when I start that, VS will go into a normal debug mode. I can actually hit breakpoints. And what I'm seeing here is this loads up is I'm actually going to execute the code as it was running at the time that the customer went through it. So this is a break, and now I'm seeing the locals windows in the bottom with mm -hmm. all the memory in the state at that time. I can naturally step through as you'd expect over different parts of this. I'm loading into all of the hotels at first. And here now you see my update of count of hotels. It's finding three hotels out of all the ones we have to look through. Um, and then I'm going to go and call this function that should calculate for me the best hotel. So if I step over that, uh, let's see how many returns. So, okay, so here now it's showing me that in production there's only three, uh, or there were three hotels total, there's only one left. So now I think I'm pretty close to my bug. Now, if this was a real debug environment, you'd have to kind of stop debugging, go back, kind of reset up the whole repro to make yeah. sure you get it without having any side effects. But instead, because I'm debugging a trace, I can actually go and uh, step backwards. So I'm actually going to step back into that last call that I made, so using this new command that we're introducing called step back into. And this is actually reversing the execution. So instead of stepping back into the top or stepping into the top of a function as you'd normally see, we're actually coming up the bottom of the function. Mm -hmm. And I'll just keep stepping back. And you see now all the locals cool. are just cool. unwinding. Oh, you go. It's still cool. <laughs> still cool. Yeah, it's something we've been working on with yes. Microsoft Research, actually. Yeah. So it's not just like your standard issue cool. It's like extra special cool. Yes. Yeah. It does not get old. And the, <laughs> my, my favorite one is this one here, where I just kind of step back. And I want to run across back to the beginning. So I can drop a breakpoint at the beginning of this for loop, I don't have to step through all of it. And then we have a new command that is reverse continue. So, you know, continue forward across the loop. I can reverse continue back to the beginning of the loop here. And now I'm paused at the beginning. All that time nice. rewinded. And now from here, yeah. I can slowly step forward and see what's going on in my code. Pretty cool. So reverse let's continue. step into this loop. I love that. Let's see. Okay, so I've got this uh, method here that's calculating our uh, best hotels, and this is doing our calculations. Let's start stepping through this here, and uh, it looks like it's probably something in this comparison that's comparing between uh, the ratings of four and five stars. So let me invite my partner uh, into a live share. Now I can actually do a live share in the middle of this trace debugging Ooh. to have my partner take a look at what's going on, help me figure out what's happening here. Nice. Pretty cool. Yeah. So let's see. <laughs> So we're taking demo bits on top of demo bits, combining them together and see what kind of chewy goodness we get out of it. All right, so I've got a live share uh, session started. And I'm going to switch over to Teams. And I can paste that link uh, for Amanda to come and take a look. 
All right, Amanda, do you mind taking a look at this bug that I was seeing in, sure. uh, in production? So now all I have to do is go ahead and click on that link that Anthony sent to me, mm -hmm. and it's going to bring up a web page that will figure out that what I want is to load a code editor. And for me, I want to load Visual Studio 2017. Yep. So I'm just going to say yes. And then after that, it's going to actually start up Visual Studio, but not just start up Visual Studio as normal. It's actually going to start up initiated by the context of the live share session that right. Anthony has. Now, usually when people see demos of live share, it's like, oh, I'm doing this code, I'm doing this co-authoring, co-editing experience. But what you're going to see here is that we're actually going to join in the middle of a context of a debug session. Now, this isn't just a normal debug session. This is actually a debug session that's back in time. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so it's actually something that was caught on you know, a production environment, and mm -hmm. a trace was captured. Yep. So, so I'm actually joining his session now in debug mode for something that happened in production a, well, a while ago. Sure. Not right now. So as you can see, as soon as it loads, I'm actually, you know, I can see his cursor where he's at. I yep. actually am uh, uh, broken at the breakpoint that he has, and I have the full debug experience that you would expect. So I can, you know, expand locals and look at this and see the, the value of count, things like that. So if you, you'd also be able to go forwards and backwards, right? If you had a version of Visual Studio that supported that? Theoretically, yes. Okay. So I can go ahead and, and go forwards and backwards in time in terms of moving the debug cursor. Mm -hmm. We have not yet done the work to actually take those backwards buttons and the reverse continue buttons that Anthony has right. and make those available in my context if I'm in, in a time travel yeah. debug session. That would but be that, is, that is definitely something that we want to do. Oh. Yeah. So he's got a feature Visual Studio that you don't have, but you would potentially make that available. To well, him, but the cool thing is versa. that, like, because we have a shared debug cursor, right. he can basically progress the debug cursor sure. however he yeah. wants to, including right. going back in time right. to show me what the bug is. Yes, Why so to show you. Yeah, yeah let's do it. So I'm gonna step forward here, and uh, we should see that all of our memory is updating, and I see that uh, we just stepped over down to the bottom of that method because it didn't match that comparison. I can just keep stepping through. Now from here, I'm going to step one more time, and then I'll step back. All right, and now I should be able to step back over. And now as I go back, yep. you see we're going backwards. And even though she doesn't have uh, the demo time travel debugging bit, right. she's still tracking she's my still cursor wherever it. it's exactly. going. Exactly. Yeah, and cool. the same thing with all the memory updates. You'll see all of that happening in Locals Windows as well. Very yeah. nice. All the values. So, so what's the problem? Okay, so uh, we're seeing here that. Oh, um, that's right. I, yeah, oh, that's right. We're the bugs. No, it's just you cool. were trying yeah. to fix. <laughs> I just thought we were doing cool demos. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Okay, thanks. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. You can just watch that cursor move back and forth all day long, right? Um, no, so we were, we were trying to figure out why it is that our best get best hotels method here is, isn't returning any hotels, and I think it has something to do with this if statement here uh, that uh, is comparing uh, the hotels of four and five stars. Okay, so basically, if I look at the the rating here for this particular value, so we should be able to get, and I see it's a three. Okay, but then if I look at that and I look at the rating, I actually see that it's four point three. So if you see the code that I have here, it's actually checking if it is exactly four or if it's exactly five, and that was a rating of four point three. Okay. So my my code has a bug here. So. How should we fix it? Well, why don't we actually fix it right here, and then we can run some unit tests and see what happens when we sure, make sure all good. the tests are passed. Yeah. Okay, let me stop debugging. All right, well, why, since uh, we're in a live share, you can actually make that change yourself and make sure Yeah, so working. I guess I'm checking to see if it's greater than 4 and also uh, less than 5. Yep. All right, so all let's right. see if that works. So now I saved it. Yep. Anthony should see it directly in his, yep. in so his version. Up. I'm going to do a rebuild. And then once that's rebuilt, I'll start off a shared terminal. And from this shared terminal, we can actually run our test cases. So right. as soon as he brings up the shared terminal, I actually also see that shared terminal nice. coming up in my session. Cool. My hands weren't even on the keyboard. I didn't touch anything. Yeah. Like the, I just got that context because he, he wanted to share that this with me. This is just so cool. Yeah. So you want me to do the... the uh, go for it. Let's yeah. just go ahead and... Because everything you type, I see on my terminal test. as well. Let's see. So move to tests, and then I want to just run our .NET tests like that. And we actually are going to see in real time the results of the tests for this change. 
So it's building. And we can see that the text execution is starting. Yep, and if we're doing the, the simulcast share, we should see that both of the screens are updating all the same content. Mm -hmm. Right, yep. so we yep. see that that's yeah. successful. So cool. now, now, remember, like, I don't have, uh, I don't necessarily have any of the context of right. Anthony's code on my machine, right? You right? don't have the code, you don't have the test local, you don't even necessarily have the same features he has. Right, I might even, right. might not even have the SDK dependencies right. he has. He yep. could be building an Android app and I might not have the Android SDK exactly. on my machine. So, you know, it's really cool. And the other thing is, especially when you're collaborating in a team environment, like how many of the, you know, debug sessions, collaborative debug sessions you've mm -hmm. had are due to to developer configuration, right. like configuration on the dev box. This isn't just like a terminal that's specific to this project. This is actually a real terminal yep. that has complete access to what's running on his machine. Yes. So I can I can use it to inspect environment variables or do whatever I want. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that comes with. So be with, careful, kids. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> be careful, kids. That definitely comes with you know some <laughs> security. Uh, well, like you have to be comfortable with who you're sharing right. it with. Um, but but it does really allow you to debug a whole bunch of issues, and we've seen even internally folks using it inside of Microsoft that a lot of reports of people just talking about how how helpful it has been mm -hmm. just for the context of being able to share a terminal. Right. So that's that's pretty cool. So then so let's just jump to the slides real quick just to talk about live share. So what you guys saw was, oh, uh, let's see, there, there we is. go. Um, so what you guys saw was that basically in with Visual Studio Live Share, you can use the tools that you like that are configured for you. Mm -hmm. So for me, I'm using Visual Studio, Anthony's using Visual Studio, but we could have used VS Code, right? right? And we could have had narrator settings, I could be using the dark theme, like whatever it is that makes me super productive, yep. I get to use the tools that I'm super productive in. Whereas, you know, if in screen sharing, you're really kind of like bound to the person who is sharing the screen with you, right. right? How annoying is it when, I mean, even when you call support, for example, and they want to take over your machine, and you know, sometimes they get access to the mouse, sometimes mm -hmm. they don't, so, and then you give them control, and then you can't really touch the screen because right. you have to na like negotiate who has control over the mouse and the keyboard, yep. um, and that just happens all the time for developers. Yeah. So, so this really makes it possible for you to use the tools that you love that are configured for your use. You get immediate real-time collaboration. So if I type a little character, Anthony sees it pretty much immediately. We have the full context. So not only do we have just one file that I can see, mm -hmm. but I actually have the full context of the project that he's working right. on. Without having to duplicate his environment. Right. Which could take hours, days. And that's super useful right. because, because uh, I, like for me to get my bearings to help somebody, it sometimes requires that I do a little bit of spelunking around right. their project to kind of understand what's going on, yeah. right? Versus the four and a half minutes or whatever this took where you right. worked it out, found the problem. This was definitely a streamlined <laughs> demo, but like most of the time, you know, you might be talking about a problem and it's like, hey, I think it's here, yeah. but this is somebody who's asking for help. They might not really know, right. right? And so you might need to actually go and look at other files to figure out what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, and with this, you don't have to ask them to like open the Solution Explorer or open up a folder. Like you can go ahead and inspect right. all of that yourself. Yeah. And then obviously we showed debugging together. Uh, you know, LiveShare today supports debug sessions. What we showed right. that has not yet re been released to the world yet, but is coming, is being able to debug together in the context of a time travel debugging session which I think is pretty That's cool. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Very, very cool. Yeah. So uh, I think we talked about all those things. So the next thing that I want to talk about is um, shift left. Have you ever heard of the concept of shift left? I have, um, <laughs> but <laughs> why don't you explain it so for those that have either not heard it or may think it means something different. So basically it's the idea that like there's a lot of things that go on in the developer process that might not be part of the what we would call the developer inner loop. So mm -hmm. basically the edit debug cycle, edit debug build cycle. Um, things that happen like code analysis or unit testing that might happen after you've done a build right. and maybe even asynchronously um, with your application mm -hmm. as you've built it. So what we're aiming to do is to make it so that we can bring more of those processes 
earlier in the process as possible. That's what we mean by left. Um, that they happen earlier in the developer okay. development process so that you can find and, and remedy issues much, much quicker, right. much more quickly. So, um, so one of the things that we've been working on is actually bringing PR experiences directly into Visual Studio. That would be nice. That would be Because cool. today you kind of, you can start the process, but then you have to leave Visual Studio and go, go over to, some to web portal. the SDS or GitHub or wherever you're yeah. going. It'd be nice to have it happen inside Visual Studio. Right, or to some <laughs> command line I think or we something should. like that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Hmm. So, so if, we tab, if we go back to our instance of Visual Studio where we fixed this bug earlier. So now what I want to do is basically take that code fix that I just made mm -hmm. and apply it to set a code that I've already been working on and okay. then actually commit it as a PR. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this directly from the session that Anthony and I just had been working on. And I'm going to go to my other project. Um, this is actually my local repo of the same project mm -hmm. that I've been working on some editor fixes for. So you can see that I have four different changes across yep. various different files. And I'm just going to replace this line with the code fix that we just made. And you can see that it's less than four and also mm -hmm. um, uh, greater than four and also less than five. I'm going to save that. And uh, let me just close this instance of Visual Studio. Come back to this one. And then what I'm going to do is go ahead and just look at those changes. And what you'll see is that it's going to bring me into a diff mode. Um, now we've had diff for a little bit in Visual Studio, but this is this is yet a this is a new kind of what we call a ubiquitous diff yeah. experience You've where had you to have go find it before. Yeah, you just have the it, it, cool. it kind of comes up automatically. Mm -hmm. You know, I can not only see it in side by side mode, but I could also see it in inline mode. So we can actually mm -hmm. see that edit there. Mm -hmm. And it basically uh, allows me to commit that right here. So I can just go ahead and do some, um, some style cleanup plus um, rating bug. And I can go ahead and commit all and push. Mm -hmm. And then, so it's pushing to the current branch, which is all basically happening locally, right. but now you can see that I have this new <gasps> link here to create a pull request Ooh, yeah. directly in Visual Studio. <gasps> so, oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, so now it, now it kind of lets me go through all of the different changes that I mm -hmm. have. I can go ahead and add, you know, and add Anthony there, add him. And because Kendra has been working on some of our tests for this, I want to add her as well. And then I want to go ahead and create it. Is there anything else that I missed? I don't think so. So I'm just I going to go it. ahead Fewer and create Fewer context switches. You're doing this all in the same place. Yeah, exactly. So yep. that's, that's kind of the idea. So now let's go ahead and switch over to Kendra, who can review this change. Yeah. So let's say I'm happily coding over here in my machine. And if you want to go ahead and switch to my screen. Yep, there that's we that. go. Okay. I'm happily coding away. And let's say I get a oh. notification since I was added as a reviewer to Amanda's pull request. I can actually go ahead and open um, that, this pull request that I was added by, and it switches all of my context. You kind of saw the output in the mm -hmm. window. It pulls uh, Amanda's branch to make sure I am actually reviewing the right stuff. And now I'm getting this like pull request discussion message that I I now see what PR she gave. I have a pull request comments window. If I go over to the Solution Explorer, you might have noticed this new little icon up here. Um, this is uh, my review filter, which I can toggle to see only the changes of oh, in this PR nice. and all of the files that have actually changed. Um, and I know we talked a lot about IntelliCode in the previous episode. Mm -hmm. IntelliCode can also come into the PR experience here. Um, you will see a little new icon because IntelliCode has actually reviewed this PR and it can mark what files are interesting or um, what have had a lot of changes or get a lot of oh, traffic cool. as saying, hey, uh -huh. this is an important file you might want to um, pay more attention to as you're reviewing it. And that's actually based on AI. It's machine right. learning models mm -hmm. that we've looked at a whole bunch of different PRs to understand kind of like what represents risky types of, of changes. 
Um, and so based on that model, that's how it selects that indication as to which files you should focus cool. on. Yeah, so this file, I can see in the UBDEF had a lot of frequent changes, but I can kind of tell, okay, this was actually just a lot of code cleanup and refactoring, as um, Amanda mentioned before. Though I'm not too worried about this file since I know it's just code cleanup. So now I can look in the pull request comments, and IntelliCode also has a suggestion um, right here. So let me go ahead and change to inline mode so we can see this a little bit better. So IntelliCode left a suggestion right here. Here I'm using an I enumerable. Well, I'm creating an I enumerable of a subset of a review list, only looking at recent reviews here. Mm -hmm. And then when I go into the for loop, I don't actually use that sublist. I'm still using a larger set. So IntelliCode was able to see that pattern nice. right away and say, hey, that's kind of inefficient to iterate through. Right? Oh, wow. <laughs> and it is even suggesting what I need to rename it to. Cool. And I only have to click a button to apply that fix. And it renamed it from reviews to my recent reviews, which would be a Very smaller, nice. the subset yeah. of that so, list. So that's also something that we've been working on with MSR. Mm -hmm. Basically, they've come up with brand new machine learning science, you know, new graph theory um, to identify different types of bugs that basically cannot be found with static analysis. Right. So this is a kind of opens a whole new door of types of issues that your IDE could find for you. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, and as soon as the fix was applied, um, the state changed to resolved, which was pretty sweet. Um, so I know that there were some tests that were changed with this PR, so I want to go ahead and dive in to look at those. And I can see in this PR context, live unit testing is still running. So cool, I'm still getting cool, my live cool. unit testing glyphs, um, even in the viewer. Uh, so I know that it uh, looks like Amanda had updated this test to reflect um, the new results. So see, we're kind of adding in a float here and mm -hmm. everything. So I can actually set a breakpoint in this PR that I'm reviewing and start debugging this test. Holy cow. <laughs> It's kind of our big wow moment. Wow. <laughs> Maybe I should have set it up more, but yeah. So I can hit that no break way. Button and actually step through my diff that viewer. That's cool. Pretty insane. Okay. Uh, yeah, so you so it's a great experience. You've got debugging, you've got IntelliSense, uh, you've got live unit testing glyphs, you have dot completion all inside of a PR experience. And we even have IntelliCode also doing yep. the smart suggestions and the most likely uh, uh, code completion patterns we want Very in this cool. area. Yeah, pretty sweet. Yeah, yeah so, so the, that's thing, that's the thing, what we're really trying to do here is to make sure that Kendra, as the reviewer, right. can be as productive as she can yeah. possibly be in that code reviewing process because code reviewing takes a lot of time and oftentimes it really takes a lot of time, particularly for senior developers because they often get the bulk of the reviews that mm -hmm. they have to do, right? Mm -hmm. But when they do a review, oftentimes the only thing that they're able to do is like a cursory glance right. at what's going on and like, hey, at LGTM, right? It looks good to me. Um, but with this, because you can actually run tests, you can use code navigation, you can actually debug and maybe even change some things, you can actually see what's going on in that PR yeah, and be much more confident. You're actually conducting a real live code review. That's well, very different cool. from Not browser, only that, yeah. but because of IntelliCode, you know, first of all, you have even more confidence that some bugs are being found, right. but you also are able to focus your code review more on the files and the changes mm -hmm. that are more likely to cause issues. Right. So that, that we hope, is going to make, make people a lot more productive Definitely. in their code reviews. Definitely. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> so that's really all we got for you today around uh, team productivity. I think next time I wanted to show you how Visual Studio lets you do any app and any and Absolutely. I'm, yeah. I'm always up for a part three. All right. Cool. <laughs> Sweet. Cool. Very, very cool stuff. Thanks, guys, so much. Thanks. Thank Hope you, you enjoyed that. Us. And we will see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox.